looks completely different and uh, I mean it all speaks for itself obviously we have a grand piano which is wonderful we have new art which is all made by Joseph's granddad and then the frames are all made by his father so it's really a uh, a family art gallery over here right now which is just marvelous but uh, we're not here to talk about art we're here um, to talk about a couple of things that I've been taught by music and maybe indirectly also so by arts um, and things that I'm continuing to learn um, and that probably you know in the years to come they will come back and, and be more relevant or maybe a bit less relevant we'll see um, but you know, since it's mid-December and it's kind of the time of the year to reflect but then also look forward, this idea popped into my head and so I thought maybe it's a nice way to get back into the vlogging. So, here are a couple of things that I've learned and I hope they're not the most conventional ones or at least I try to make them not the most conventional ones. Let's see if you like it. Welcome. Oh, and there goes the cat. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Natalie. I'm a musician. And today we're talking a couple of lessons that music has taught me over the years. And there are, of course, many, many, many things that music or the arts in general teach you, such as discipline, dexterity, uh, building some new neurological paths, um, problem solving, uh, making connections, uh, making it easier to learn languages sometimes, all that stuff. Um, plenty, plenty, plenty of examples. Um, but I selected a couple that are maybe not as uh, obvious and they are very meaningful to me and I think that they, or I hope that they also will be meaningful to you and will help you if you feel stuck with something or whatever, which is always um, the goal of any vlog that I'm making. So, without further ado, let's dive in. First and foremost, focus. And I know I said that I wouldn't go for the very obvious things, but I mean focus in the most broad sense of the word. Um, obviously focus when you sit down with your music and you practice uh, your piece, it requires focus. You can't do a solid practice session without solid focus. It's just impossible. You, you, if you are thinking of a million things at the same time and practicing, you're not practicing, you're wasting your time. <laughs> and it's very, very, you know, it'll, it'll come bite you in the ass. If you think that you, you have practiced, basically you were doing other stuff in your brain, you will not be as well prepared as you think or you hoped that you were. And that's just it's such a valuable lesson to learn and especially nowadays because we are bombarded 24 7 with things almost every minute there are pings on your phone there's emails there's um ad advertisements advertisements i was going to say but advertisements everywhere you look um you have your job you have a family you have uh, your home to take care of you have the hobbies that you want to do you have your self-care school so many things and to then be able to just say, okay, right now I want to do this and just fully focus on that. That is such a valuable skill. And with a mind like mine that continuously races, it is extremely hard and I find it maybe even more valuable. A second pretty valuable lesson. You know that saying, what comes up must come down? To me, it's more like what's in will come out. <laughs> and it's something that usually life teaches you, for sure. But being, you know, daily, wow, I have the German word in my head right now, but uh, being busy with music, busy is the wrong word, but, um, you know, practicing music every day, um, cultivating that creativity, it taught me that lesson, I think, earlier than when life would just have taken its course. And so whatever is going on during your practice, in your body, whether that's tension, whether that's an anxiety, whether that's a busy mill going on in your brain, whatever it is, in the end, that is what will show on stage. So if you want to be 
someone who, I don't know, you play a very beautiful love song, so to say, and you want to convey that, the, the message of the love song, <laughs> which hopefully is something very optimistic and um, precious, then that is what should be going on inside when you want it to come out. Uh, it sounds all very logical and easy until you start doing it. <laughs> um, you know, all the pressures of the day, they're always, they're constantly in our bodies. And music or any arts, I suppose, or dance, or, or I guess that's also what yoga does, or whatever it is that triggers you, um, it opens the door massively towards self-awareness and acceptance. And in turn, that brings you closer to yourself, it makes you know yourself super well, hopefully also makes you accept yourself where you are. And I think that is what makes some artists truly brilliant, is when they know themselves so well they can just be honest when they perform. And uh, that is what to me makes the best connection with the audience and connecting with the audience that's to me my ultimate goal as a, as a musician. So I very, very highly value that. And, uh, you know, learning that just to be aware with whatever is going on inside during the practice and if it's not serving what I in the end want to communicate with the music, I'm now learning to shove that aside and, and really go more with what it is that I want to communicate. For some people this might be very simple, to me it very much was not so and I'm very very grateful to have learned this lesson or at least be in the process of getting that into my daily practice. Thirdly, prioritizing. I have this type of brain, as you probably already know, <laughs> that almost never shuts up. And uh, I work the best when my house is clean, when I got my things figured out, and then I can just practice in bliss and it's wonderful. However, we only have 24 hours in a day and usually by the time I get through my to-do list and feel like, okay, now I can have uninterrupted practice, it's already almost the end of the day. Not a good thing. So it's up to me. I'm really responsible for getting this figured out and doing it in a way that serves my music practice better so that I perform better. Not many professions, in my opinion, teach you that so uh, blatantly. I hope that's the word as music or sports or you know anything that makes you a performer. As a performer, you're really the one to answer. It's up to you. And in today's society, we don't really have many of these um, opportunities or times where we are really the ones to answer for what we do. And it's such a valuable thing. It's so good to learn to prioritize and to really spend the time with the things that mean the most to you and not let any of the other stuff get in the way. And it's so easy to let other stuff get in the way like that. Facebook scrolling, Instagram scrolling, TikTok scrolling, um, I don't know, doing some administration when you could be doing that in the evening when, you know, uh, the house is quiet anyway and whatever. Or, um, yeah, oftentimes we put stuff in our own way, often without realizing it. And being a performer really makes you aware of that in a way that in my opinion, not many other professions do. And I just find that extremely, extremely valuable. So those are my three big lessons that I basically am continuing to learn for music. Really that focus, the whatever is in here will come out no matter how much you try to maybe suppress it. <laughs> It'll just find its way out and better to just deal with it and get it over it, but then also prioritizing. And it's something that can, uh, yeah, it's easy to slip up there, especially for me, maybe also to you. And uh, anyway, I hope that whatever I talked about today, that it, uh, it was helpful to you and maybe open up your eyes a little bit for some things that you're like, hey, I'm actually I'm doing that too, or I'm, um, this might be something that is obstructing me until now and I didn't really realize. 
So if that's the case, leave a thumbs up. Thanks so much for being here until now. That's really, really awesome. If you have a request or um, a question or anything about the topics that I'm doing vlogs about, by all means, leave a comment below and I'll happily, happily oblige um, and answer your need <laughs> if I can. And um, ooh, if you'd like to become a patron, you can do that um, by visiting the link below and having some access to exclusive content, you can check out um, what's there uh, available to you. And um, it's been really nice being in front of the camera again, but also a little bit terrifying. But hey, we're here to learn and um, the prioritizing thing. I didn't prioritize making vlogs for a while, so this is what I get answering for what I do. Anyway, thank you so much for being here, guys. I really highly appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you guys again soon. Happy holidays and the very, very best for 2023. Take care. Bye-bye.